Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's say together our opening prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us to be merciful like the Heavenly Father, and have told us that whoever sees you sees him. Show us your grace, and we will be saved. Your loving days freed Zacchaeus and Matthew from being enslaved by money, and the adulterers of Magdalene from seeking happiness only in creative things. May Peter weep after his betrayal, and assure paradise to the repentant thief. Let us hear, as if addressed to each one of us, the word that you spoke to the Samaritan woman, if you knew the gift of God. We ask this through the intercession of Mary, Mother of Mercy, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The first station Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Pilate brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. I think we too are the people who on the one hand want to listen to Jesus, but on the other hand at times like to find a stick to beat others with, to condemn others. And Jesus has this message for us, mercy. I think that this is the Lord's most powerful message, mercy. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then you will be what you will. The second station, Jesus accepts the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. So they took Jesus. And he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the Place of the Skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. The cross is not an ornament that we must always put in the churches. It is not a symbol that distinguishes us from others. The cross is mystery, the mystery of God who humbles himself to become nothing. Christianity is a person, a person raised raised on the cross, a person who annihilated himself to save us. It is impossible for us to be free ourselves from sin on our own. You cannot understand Christianity without understanding this profound humiliation of the Son of God, who humbled himself and became a servant unto death, even death on a cross, in order to serve us. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and that you with me what you will. The third station, Jesus calls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Now the men who were holding Jesus mocked him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and asked him, Prophesy, who is that who struck you? And they spoke many other words against him, reviling him. God's patience has to call forth in us the courage to return to him. However many mistakes and sins there may be in our life, it is there in the wounds of Jesus, that we are truly secure. There we encounter the boundless love of his heart. 
We adore you. I love you, Jesus, my Lord of all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me what you will. The fourth station, Jesus meets his blessed mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. He who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Mary treasures divine life in her heart in perfect harmony with her son Jesus. Her hymn of praise, sung at the threshold of the home of Elizabeth, was dedicated to the mercy of God, which extends from generation to generation. We too were included in those prophetic words of the Virgin Mary. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart by having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and may you with me. The fifth station, the cross is laid upon Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. As they laid him away, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. To be a Christian means to be a Cyrene. Having the faith consists in this. You belong to Jesus if you bear the weight of the cross with him. Otherwise you are going along a path that seems good, but is not true. Step by step, Jesus prepares us so that we can understand better. He prepares us to accompany him with our crosses along his path to redemption. He prepares us to be Cyrenes, to help him bear the cross. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and do with me what you will. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. O oh God of my salvation. God's face is the face of a merciful Father who is always patient. Have you thought about God's patience? The patience he has with each one of us. This is his mercy. He always has patience, patience with us. He understands us. He waits for us. He does not tire of forgiving us if we are able to return to him with a contrite heart. Great is God's mercy, says the Son. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and that you with me what you will. Seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
Upon him was the chastised meant that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. If a Christian wants to move forward on the road of Christian life, he must fall, just as Jesus fell. It is the way of humility. Yes, it also means he must take humiliation upon himself, just as Jesus did. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The eighth station, the women of Jerusalem mourn for Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. There followed him a great multitude of people, and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. With our eyes fixed on Jesus and his merciful gaze, we experience the love of the Most Holy Trinity. God is love. John affirms for the first and only time in all of Holy Scripture. This love has now been made visible and tangible in Jesus' entire life. This person is nothing but love, a love given gratuitously. The relationships he forms with the people who approach him manifest something entirely unique and once unrepeatable. Everything in him speaks of mercy. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant the time I love you always, and then you will The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. You, O Lord, are the God who takes away iniquity and pardons sin, who does not hold your anger forever, but are pleased to, to show mercy. You, Lord, will return to us and have pity on your people. The Church is commissioned to announce the mercy of God, the beating heart of the Gospel, which must penetrate the heart and mind of every person. It is absolutely essential for the Church that she herself live and testify to mercy. Her language and her gestures must transmit mercy so as to touch the hearts of all people and inspire them once more to find the road that leads I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love you always, and do with me what you will. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Christ, who told us to forgive one another seventy times seven, has given us his example. He has forgiven us seventy times seven. No one can strip us of the dignity bestowed upon us by this boundless and unfailing love. With a tenderness which never disappoints, but is always capable of restoring our joy, he makes it possible for us to lift our heads 
starts anew. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and that you with me what you will. The eleventh station, Jesus, is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus Christ is the face of the Father's mercy. These words might well sum up the mystery of the Christian faith. Mercy has become living and visible in Jesus of Nazareth, reaching its culmination in him. Jesus of Nazareth, by his words, his actions, and his entire person, reveals the mercy of God. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent you with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and do with me what you will. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. On the cross when Jesus endured in his own flesh the dramatic encounter of the sin of the world and God's mercy, he could feel at his feet the consoling presence of his mother and his friend. At that crucial moment, before fully accomplishing the work which his father had entrusted to him, Jesus said to Mary, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to his beloved friend, Here is your mother. Jesus left us his mother to be our mother too. Only after doing so did Jesus know that all was now finished. Let's turn now to that mother of God that she helped us in this time of life to stand with her and with John under the cross with Christ who gave his life. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace. the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our day. Amen. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices. We need constantly to contemplate the mystery of mercy. Our salvation depends on it. Mercy. The word reveals the very mystery of the most holy trinity. Mercy. The ultimate and supreme act by which God comes to meet us. Mercy. The fundamental law that dwells in the heart of every person. Mercy. The bridge that connects God and man. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you. 
Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, where no one had ever been laid. So, because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. God's mercy can make even the driest land become a garden, can restore life to dry bones. Let us be renewed by God's mercy. Let us be loved by Jesus. Let us enable the power of his love to transform our lives too. And let us become agents of this mercy, channels through which God can water the earth, protect all creation, and make justice and peace flourish. I love you, Jesus, my love of all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will. Before we adore the Blessed Sacrament, let's close our meditation on the Stations of the Cross with the closing prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are invisible. now our adoration of the Blessed Sacrament as a hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, which is in the back of the hymn book. Be Still for the Presence of the Lord in the back of the hymn book. Thank you. 